Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us here today. We're delighted to uh, be here for this important announcement because protecting our nation's food supply is a top priority for President Obama, Vice President, President Biden, and our departments. And we know that families have enough to worry about. You shouldn't have to worry about whether or not the food on your dinner table is safe. But we've seen too many large-scale recalls, everything from spinach to peanut products, pistachios, peppers, mushrooms, alfalfa sprouts, and recently even cookie dough. We also know that food safety is a critical public health issue. Each year in the United States, an estimated 5,000 people die and tens of millions fall ill from consuming contaminated food. So earlier this year, about four months ago, the President convened a food safety working group, bringing together officials from across the administration to discuss how we can strengthen the food safety system and bring it into the 21st century. The President asked our group to advise him on how we can do a couple of things. How can we update our food safety laws for the 21st century? How can we foster cooperation throughout government and ensure that we're not just designing laws that will keep Americans safe, but actually enforcing those laws? Now, those aren't easy questions, but the 13 departments and agencies that participated in the working group have developed some important answers. So today, we're pleased to announce the basic principles that we've agreed should guide our food safety system. And they are as follows. Number one, preventing harm to consumers, doing no harm, must be our top priority. Secondly, that food safety inspections and enforcement depend on good data and analysis. And third, that outbreaks must be identified quickly and stopped. Now, these aren't just words on a page. We're already putting these principles into action. We know that prevention is job number one, and today the Food and Drug Administration issued a final rule that will help control salmonella contamination of eggs during production. With the new requirements for a number of preventive practices, this rule is estimated to reduce the number of foodborne illnesses by about 80,000 every year and will generate an annual savings of over a billion dollars. The FDA will also issue new guidelines that will help prevent contamination of tomatoes, melons, and leafy greens. These proposals will establish a minimum recommended safety standards for the protection and distribution of these foods and help reduce the number of foodborne illnesses they may cause. And even as we increase our focus on prevention, we know that we can improve our response and recovery from outbreaks of foodborne illness. HHS and the U.S. Department of Agriculture will improve our efforts to collect better data about potential risks presented by different foods and more rapidly identify any potential outbreaks. In the next three months, the Food and Drug Administration will issue draft guidance on steps the food industry can take to create tracing systems that will allow us to more quickly detect the sources of contamination and more quickly remove the unsafe food from store shelves. We're implementing a new unified incident command system to address outbreaks. The system will bring local, state, and federal governments together to help protect the American people. And to increase accountability, we're creating a new position at the Food and Drug Administration, a Deputy Commissioner for Foods. This position will report directly to Commissioner Hamburg, and be responsible for restructuring and revitalizing the FDA's work to protect our food supply. Now, all of these steps are critical, but what matters most is the truly collaborative effort. Our departments and the entire federal government have long been working together to protect our food supply. But today, the Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Agriculture have never worked together as intensely and cooperatively as we're working now thanks to Secretary Vilsack. The spirit of cooperation is essential to the success of our nation's food safety system, and I know it will support our efforts as the Food Safety Working Group continues its work. 
Before I turn over the microphone, I want to acknowledge that some of the leaders of the food safety initiatives are here in this room. Congressman Dingell and Congresswoman DeLauro have long fought these battles on behalf of citizens across the United States. We have the leadership from the FDA, who has been extraordinary. We have leadership from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, colleagues at HHS who have done enormous work. And with us is Melody Barnes and Tino Coelho from the Domestic Policy Council, who have been working to develop these important recommendations. So this truly has been a cross-governmental effort. And now I want to introduce my good friend and partner in food safety, the, the Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Vice President and, uh, and uh, Secretary Sebelius, thank you for your leadership on this. Uh, it is fairly clear that uh, we would not be here today were it not for uh, the dedicated leadership of Secretary Sebelius and her uh, dedicated staff at HHS. And I also want to acknowledge the members of the working group who are here uh, who have devoted a great deal of time uh, to getting us to this point. Uh, as the Secretary indicated, uh, President Obama established this working group and he really charged us with the responsibility of working collaboratively to come up with a, a, a more uh, improved U.S. food safety system. And as the Secretary suggested, there were three basic driving principles that drove our work and now will drive our work from this point forward. Prioritizing prevention, uh, strengthening surveillance and enforcement, and improving response and recovery. Within each of those, I want to talk very briefly about USDA's role and steps that we're going to take today and steps that we'll take over the course of the next several months to follow through on those three core principles. First of all, we also appreciate uh, the need for cutting salmonella risk in poultry products. And so by the end of this year, uh, the Food Safety and Inspection uh, System and Service will develop new standards to reduce the prevalence of salmonella in turkeys and poultry. The agency will also establish a salmonella verification program with the goal of having 90 percent of our poultry establishments in this country meeting the new standards by the end of 2010. In the area of surveillance and enforcement, we're looking forward uh, to reducing the threat of E. coli. As I celebrated my 4th of July weekend, I couldn't help but think of the barbecue pits uh, that were uh, being used in my st home state of Iowa, uh, cooking hamburgers and cooking uh, chicken and the question whether or not we were doing everything we could do to make sure that families were protected. Well, uh, we know that E. coli affects and impacts over 70,000 Americans each year. And so today we are announcing uh, FSIS's efforts to improve enforcement uh, in beef facilities across the country. We will be issuing improved instructions to workforces in these beef facilities to verify that establishments are handling beef uh, and are acting to reduce the presence of E. coli. We will also increase our sampling uh, to ensure that we're locating this pathogen, focusing largely on the components that go into making ground beef. We're also going to build a national tracking and response system working with HHS and others. We want the capacity to be able to rapidly trace back to the source of a foodborne illness uh, should one strike in order to protect consumers and their families. We, as the Secretary indicated, are going to create a unified incident command system, and within 90 days, federal agencies will implement this new incident command system to address outbreaks of foodborne illness. This approach is designed to link all relevant agencies, as well as state and local governments, more effectively to facilitate communication and decision making in the face of an emergency. Within 12 months, we will also uh, significantly improve our collaboration with state public health departments through adding additional hi hires and expanded outreach. And one thing that I'm excited about is the capacity of using new technologies to communicate critical food safety information by creating an improved individual alert system. The federal government will enhance the www.foodsafety.gov website to better communicate information to the public and improve overall our alert system to individuals, allowing consumers to receive alerts and food safety information uh, as quickly as possible. The first stage of this new improved communication system will be ready in 90 days. 
We also recognize that the Food Safety Working Group's work is not completed. And we look forward to working with the Food Safety Group to continue better coordination among federal agencies. I look forward to working with Kathleen Sebelius uh, in the near future uh, to continue our work, to continue looking for strengthened opportunities. And finally, to the members of Congress who are here, we know that our work uh, must complement your work. And we look forward to working with you as you address, through legislative uh, efforts, increased safety and, and consumer awareness. I now have the responsibility of, of introducing someone who doesn't really need an introduction. Just simply, uh, Mr. Vice President, my way of introduction is to thank you uh, for taking your time on the 4th of July, uh, traveling uh, a great distance to see the men and women who are serving us in uniform, including your son, so that they knew uh, that people in the highest offices of this, of this country care deeply about the service that they're providing, which is enabling the rest of us to enjoy a happy 4th. So, Mr. Vice President, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Tom, I, uh, I'm going to put this on the ground here. I, um, <clears throat> I want you to know, while you were thinking of uh, those barbecue pits in Iowa, uh, sandstorms were preventing the barbecue pits <laughs> from working in Iraq, but we still had a, we still had a great Fourth of July. Um, Secretary Sebelius, uh, Secretary Vilsack, you know, uh, I know you know this dean, uh, the dean of all of the Congress, uh, John. I know you know that uh, uh, one of the great benefits the president has is, and I'm, I, uh, I mean this sincerely, is having the talented cabinet he's put together. When he turns around and turns to Sebelius and Vilsack, two former governors, and said, I want to get something done, it gets done. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. I really mean it. I've been in this town a long, long time. And uh, I'm telling you, uh, they know what they're doing. Their agencies are in the kind of shape they've never been in before. And, uh, and I, I, they, I, should I want to start off by complimenting them and, and the rest of you who work with them on taking on the charge the president gave them within the short amount of time they've done it. And, uh, you know, I, and I want to thank you for uh, stepping up and taking these important steps to ensure the health and safety of the food supply here in America. I also want to uh, um, say uh, it's good to see you, Rosie. You, you've been at this for a long time, and Bart Stupak as well, Congressman Stupak, is here, and we want to thank you. Uh, as uh, the Secretary ended, he said, we know we gotta, this has got to be in conjunction with what you do legislatively. And I know the intensity with which the three of you feel about this, and your leadership is uh, very much appreciated, and we're anxious to see how you move uh, from here. You know, there are a few responsibilities uh, more basic or more important uh, than for the government to making sure that our, 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 our families in America eat, uh, eat uh, food that is not contaminated, that's safe. I mean, you think about it, it's kind of like, you know, uh, among the first responsibilities. And when you look out into the audience today, we see there are parents uh, who have lost, uh, lost children because uh, of what they ate. When you hear uh, Nancy uh, Donnelly, Nancy's here with us today, you hear her story, it's, uh, it's heart-wrenching. Her six-year-old son, Alex, fell victim to a fatal foodborne illness uh, transmitted by tainted fast food hamburger. The hamburger, uh, some, uh, so something we've all feed our children, something that all our kids have eaten without us thinking twice, without us thinking twice about any possible danger. We hear Nancy's story and, the, and so many tragedies like hers, it not only breaks your heart, it compels you, it compels us to do everything in our power to make sure that it doesn't happen again, ever. You know, that's why, when you cut through all of it, that's why we're here today. We're here today to prevent and to prepare. We're here because we know American families have enough to worry about these days, just about footing, putting food on the table, let alone whether the food on the table that they place on the table is going to be safe for their kids and their husbands and wives to eat. They should, uh, they should not have to have that as a concern. It's like I said, it's tough enough these days just getting enough money together to put food on the table. A lot of people are in trouble. Our middle class task force that the president set up and asked me to chair that both my colleagues have worked very hard with me to, uh, to bring to life is about making life better for the middle class, period. 
And uh, that's why it was created. And part of that is eliminating the perils of foam-borne illnesses. To do this, we have to act quickly and decisively to create a more comprehensive, more rational, more effective approach to food safety as outlined by my colleagues. This is, when you think about it, it's pretty long overdue. You know, I mean, you guys have been talking about this for a long time, my friends in Congress. And uh, quite simply, the food safety system of our country needs a significant update. In many ways, <clears throat> it's been unchanged since 1906 when, when uh, Upton Sinclair wrote his book, The Jungle, and the, you know, first brought the whole issue of food safety to the public consciousness. <clears throat> Well, the law hadn't changed dramatically since then. Our world has changed dramatically since then. Certainly, we want to strengthen American agriculture, but the truth is that uh, it's not unusual for us to snack on vegetables from South America and turn and pick up some fruit from uh, the South Pacific and, and then go to have a dinner from beef from Brazil, and the, and the list goes on and on and on. That's not a complaint about trade, but it's a recognition the world has changed since 1906 and the 20s and 30s and 40s. More than ever before, much of our food comes to us prepackaged, in vending machines, frozen meals, snacks and school lunch programs, processed in central facilities, sent all over the country, actually all over the world, and assembled from ingredients from all over the world. At the time when we uh, need clarity in ensuring food safety, we instead have outdated laws and priorities uh, across dozens of federal agencies involved in overseeing food safety in this country. Our inspectors and scientists lack sufficient resources. They don't have nearly enough coordination, and that needs to change. That's why President Oda Obama established the Food Safety Working Group that you heard my colleagues talk about. Our goal is to overhaul the system so that we can get better at both stopping food safety problems before they happen, and almost equally as important, moving quickly, much more quickly, to deal with them when they do. The focus on prevention is completely, is to have a completely different emphasis than we've had in the past. In the past, we focused on better reactions to food safety problems when they occur. We're putting a lot more focus now on the prevention side. We're going to make our new priority preventing those things from happening in the first place. And if, we, uh, and if they do happen, we want to make sure there's a tracking program in place that lets us move quickly to figure out where the problem emanated from and how to put a stop to it immediately. For example, a, uh, as, as tragic as it is when someone gets sick from food, the tragedy is compounded when it is known that the food is contaminated, but word didn't get out to everyone that processed it, that, excuse me, that, that purchased that food. That's why the FDA and the Food Safety and Inspection Service are strengthening what's called a, a trackback so that the uh, contaminated, food, the contaminated food supply is identified quickly and removed from the shelves quickly, and people can get quick information about the problem. And we're also announcing today more thorough inspection to prevent E. coli and other pathogens uh, at facilities of beef handlers, uh, salmonella rules to prevent contamination in the egg industry, the development of a new FDA guidance to prevent E. coli contamination of leafy greens and melons and tomatoes, and new priorities and new positions created at the FDA and the Food Safety Inspection Service to centralize key food safety functions and to help Food Safety Working Group improve the coordination across the entirety of the federal government. These are important steps in making our food supply safer, but we know, we know they're just the first steps of many. The President has made food safety uh, simply an important national priority. It's basically that basic. When he turned to you guys, that's what he was talking about. Make it a priority. You know, my dad used to say, if everything is equally important to you, nothing's important. There have to be priorities, and this is one of those priorities. Secretary Sebelius and Vilsack, uh, you're uh, to be commended, as I said, for moving so aggressively in carrying out the President's commitment to this issue. Now, uh, now we need the Congress to act, and with the leadership here in front of us who have been moving on this for a long, long time, I'm confident we'll be able to do. We need to make sure that our inspectors and scientists have all the tools they need to keep our food safe, and the unsafe food is subject to mandatory recall, so we never, ever have to hear again stories like Nancy's uh, uh, and thousands of other parents uh, whose children and friends have been uh, have been impacted by this. 
I should close by, uh, I'd also like to thank the president of the, uh, uh, the Produce Marketing Association is here tonight, uh, Brian Silverman, who, uh, who uh, I might add, coincidentally, happens to be a Delawarean. Um, and uh, I keep telling the secretary, uh, 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 Brian, that um, agriculture is a big deal in the state of Delaware. And uh, he doesn't quite believe it being from Iowa, and nor does my colleague from Kansas. But in the Delmarva Peninsula, uh, chickens are a $3 billion industry, so this matters. Um, and I want to thank you for your participation, all of you, but I most want to thank uh, the effective and, and immediate way in which the two secretaries behind me have acted. So I say to our friends in the House and, and, and the Senate, I, the only reason why uh, uh, Senator Klobuchar is not here, we're finally swore in the, uh, a senator from the state of Minnesota, <laughs> and she's at that reception, but she is equally as committed. So we're looking forward to any help we can be of any assistance in seeing to that you are able to move some of this through the House and Senate as with additional legislation. Thank you all for being here, and, uh, and this has ended. Thank you.